Yeah, I still am not entirely sure how to answer um, Mark 2-7, and I think it's, what is it, John twenty twenty three 23, okay. in terms of how that proves that Jesus is God. Yes. Okay, that he well, can forgive sins. Yeah, what's the, what's the objection? So I have an answer, but what's the objection? Uh, just that if Jesus can give the authority to forgive sins to us, then why couldn't the Father give that to a creature as well? Yeah, because I've explained. Who said the apostles are forgiving sins the way Jesus forgave? Jesus said, your sins are forgiven you. And he says, I have authority to say your sins are forgiven you. Where do you get the apostles said that? I showed you that in the context, the way they declared forgiveness of sin is by you accepting Jesus, then you're forgiven. But if you reject Jesus, then you stand condemned. Let's go to John 20 and look at it again. Okay. So it's how they went about forgiving people their sins. Oh, okay. Do you want me to start at 23 or do you want me to start before that? Well, first read John 20, 23, and I'm going to articulate the objection so people can understand what you're asking. John 20, 23. Okay. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. Now, here's the objection. We say Jesus is God because he forgives sins. But hold on. Jesus said the apostles can forgive sins or condemn people for their sins, yet that doesn't prove they're God. So how to respond to that? So here's how we respond to that objection. Number one, when Jesus says your sins are forgiven, he does so by the authority he has as God in union with the Father and the Spirit. He can say, I forgive you of your sins because I'm one with the Father and the Spirit. And as God, I alone have power to forgive because he's God. So the Father, Son, and Spirit, as the one God, they alone can forgive sins. What about the apostles? Are they forgiving sins the way Jesus? No, because we have to understand how they went about <clears throat> forgiving sins. Because Jesus says, whoever sins you're forgiven will have been forgiven in heaven. Whoever sins that you retain, meaning anyone you say they're not forgiven, then that means they're not forgiven in heaven. Here's how. John 20, 30 to 31. The how is important. The how. Go to John 20, 30 to 31. And truly, Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you may have life in his name. Did you catch it? He just said, mm -hmm. you will have everlasting life if you believe in Jesus Christ. And if you believe, you can say, mm -hmm. you're forgiven, you have everlasting life. Now go to John 3, 36. And I'm going to show you that's what Jesus means. Because he's talking about the context of sending them forth to preach the gospel. Okay, so now John 3, he who believes in the, Go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah. He who believes in the Son has everlasting life, and he who does not believe the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abides on him. See, that's what they're doing. See, that's how they're exercising that authority. Hey, believe in Jesus, you'll have everlasting life, you'll be forgiven. You don't believe, you will be condemned to hell. So now that you've rejected yeah. Jesus, then you're going to hell. Let me now show you that in practical ministry, how they did it. Go to Acts 13, 46 to 47. No, because they're not they're not directly forgiving the sins. It's no just way. through the name of Jesus. And they don't say, by our authority on earth we do this. We're saying that Jesus authorized us to tell you. You believe in him, we can say you're forgiven. You reject him, we say you're condemned, you're going to hell. So Acts 13, 46, yeah. 47, what does it say there? Then Paul and Barn Barnabas grew bold and said, It was necessary that the word of God should be spoken to you first. But since you reject it and judge yourselves unworthy of everlasting life, behold, we turn to the Gentiles. For so the Lord has commanded us. I have set you as a light to the Gentiles that you should be for salvation to the ends of the earth. So you, said, you see what he said? You've now deemed yourself unworthy of everlasting life. That means you're not saved. You're condemned. But why? Because you rejected the gospel oh. of Jesus Christ. Okay, yeah, I see that. That makes so much more sense. Then. You catch it now? Now, let me show you yeah, what John says. John says, because you believed in Jesus, you're forgiven. Go to 1 John 1, 7 to 10. And I'm going to go back to John 20 in a minute. Okay. 1 it's John 1, good. verses 7 to we, 10. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. See, that's it. If we say that wait, we hold on. Hold on. Oh. Don't rush, bro. Hold on. Oh, go ahead. Say logos with me. Logos. Man, dude, it's like you're rushing to get to a marathon. Come on, bro. You see what he said? If we walk in the light yeah. as he is in the light, then our fellowship is one another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. So he just said, you're forgiven. Yeah. Why are you forgiven? 
because you have turned to Christ and you have fellowship with God and the blood of Christ cleanses you. Yeah, now, read verses, now read verses 8 to 10. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We will forgive we you or he'll forgive you. He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. So where does he say, I forgive you? Yeah, he doesn't. <laughs> okay, now keep going. If we say that we have not sinned, we, may, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. You got it now, how they're pronouncing forgiveness and condemnation? Yeah, it's not on their own authority. If, they're just saying, because you believe in Jesus, now your sins are forgiven. Yep, and if you reject him, now you stand condemned. You're going to hell. In fact, go to John 3, 18. Believes in him is not condemned, but he who does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. End of story, buddy. You caught it? Yeah, I see that. Yeah, I got it. Now I know how to answer that. Thank now, you. But now let's go back to the context to prove that's what Jesus is saying. Jesus is saying, I'm not going to send you out with the responsibility of preaching the gospel. The gospel that if someone believes, you can then pronounce they're forgiven. A gospel if they reject, then you can pronounce they are condemned and remain in their sin. Let's go back and see the context. John 20, 21 and 23. So Jesus, 21 and 23, go ahead. So Jesus said to them again, Peace to you, as the Father has sent me, I also send you. Stop! When he had said this. You get it? <laughs> I send yeah. you. What's the context now? He's saying, as the Father has sent me, so I also send you. I send you to do what? To proclaim the gospel that's the context of 23 now read now read 22 and when he had said this he breathed on them and said to them receive the holy spirit now here's my challenge sense of any see man dude Sorry. you are so excited to get this over with you now you're going to read 22 two more times buddy okay and when he had said this he breathed on them and said to them receive the holy spirit and when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. Okay, now, if you rush to another passage, dial tone, buddy. Listen. Do you see what <laughs> he just did there? Do you see what he just did there? What did he yeah, do? He gave 20? them the Spirit. He breathed and then gave them the Holy Spirit. Now, show me a single being besides Jehovah God that breathes the Holy Spirit upon anyone. Yeah, no, there's not, there's not. <laughs> so then the very verse you quoted, John 20, 23, if you just read 22, it shows that Jesus is doing what only God Almighty does, breathe out the Holy Spirit to give life, in this context, spiritual life, regeneration. How does then 23 show that Jesus isn't God? Yeah, it doesn't. When you put it in context, it makes so much more sense. So now is that clear now?